Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and it's playtime with PM Artist Studio again, or at least play with their products. So um, I choose a different stencil or a mask or a product every time I use one of these videos. Sometimes I use more than one as well, and I just create something with it, and it's usually backgrounds because I tend to use backgrounds a lot. So um, this time I'm going to be using the Celtic Knot Mandala. As you can see, it comes as a set of three rounds and one strip. Now, the one strip I tend to use a lot for um, stenciling texture paste onto things like postcards or ACTs, which are artist trading cards for those who are not familiar with it. But let's look at the actual products. Now, I use my products, so then they will arrive to you white. Mine are already discolored because I obviously use them when I get them. So that's the large one. That's the medium sized one. That's the small one, and that's the strip I was talking about. Uh, you can jelly plate with this, depending on the size of the jelly plate, as to how much masking off you need to do. Bit of gunch on there. Um, but I tend to stencil um, texture paste or grip paste through this, and that's what I really love this for. So let's put that to one side. I'm not going to be using that today. I'm just going to be using these three here. Now, a little bit about um, PM Artist Studio. They're actually based in Texas in the United States. They're a mother-daughter team. The mother is an ex-art um, teacher. The daughter is an illustrator um, who works a lot with computer software and stuff like that. Um, there's a hidden element to PM Artist Studio, and that's Brad, who's Mariah's husband, who helps out with a lot of the design work. It's a family business. Um, I love that they're a family business. So first of all, I think I want to dive in, and I'm feeling I want one of these to be green, if not more than one of them green. So I'm going to use, let's see, let's use this one. This is just a generic bottle of paint. Um, what I do is I've got some of these bottles of paint. I'm sort of using them down now. And when they get partly full or near the end, I tend to decant other paints into them. So if you see me using a bottle of paint without a label on, it's one of my mixed bottles or hybrid bottles, whatever you want to call it. So just be aware that I can't always give you the name of the product that's in there. However, if I'm using a bottle that has got a label on it, I will show it to you and you will then find out what, what we're using. Right, for example, this is Forest Green by Americana Deco Art. I'm going to use a little bit of this in here. Probably only one dot. I don't want it to be a dark, dark. I find I get the best results if I think of starting with paler and working towards darker. Um, I think I want a little bit of something in there to give it a bit of a punch. Let's grab, okay, I've got some high viscosity transparent yellow by Peebo here um, because, ooh, and a good old dob of pink goober on the top of that one. Let's get rid of that for a start. Um, I know that yellow is one of the ingredients in green, so there's no problem me mixing that in with there. I'm not going to end up with brown or mud. So I'm going to quickly just speedball this onto my larger plate here. Um, I do have several different sizes of plates, so I tend to use whichever is the most convenient for the project I'm working upon. But I would say 99% of the time I tend to use a 12 by 12 because I like the versatility it gives me because I can always cut a 12 by 12 down into postcards or into greetings cards or ATCs or background pieces or A4s or you get what I mean? I, I can use it in very many different ways, where if I'm using a smaller one, I can't always do that. Right. I'm just going to take the larger of these at the moment, and I'm just going to flip-flop it down on here. Now, this is a technique I learned from P. P is Patricia, who is the mother at PM Artist Studio, who is actually an ex-art teacher. Um, Lots and lots of knowledge there. Love what she does. Love her sense of humour. And sometimes her dry wit and her sarcasm. Right, I put that down there. I think I'm going to lift that off straight away. Um, just so that I've got the start of a background going on. And we are going to use these in slightly different ways. So just know that it's not always going to be used like that. Now this is where I tend to use my large my large brayer. I did buy it to actually roll the paint out, but I ended up using it on the backs more than anything else. I think purely because it keeps my hands from getting too messy, and it also means that there's an even pressure as I go across. 
Now, I know it's not going to lift this all off. It's going to leave some mess on the mat. That's good, because that will then get added to the next background that I do. Just give this a bit of a pull. Up here, come. Okay, there you go. So that's given me an interesting something in the background. So I'm going to come in now. I'm going to do another colour or another set of colours. And we're going to create another one. Now I've still got some green on here. So I'm just going to put a bit of a layer of green in areas on here. I'm not worried that... Well, I don't go for perfection. Let's put it that way. Right, I think as we're in the family of green, I'd quite like to put something like a tealish colour or what's this one? This is Bahama Blue by Deco Art. And I like this. It's nice and light and vibrant. Um, I personally, and I don't know whether this is something I learned from someone in the past or whether it's something I've discovered, but I like to work from lighter colours to darker rather than going darker to lighter because I find this is a non-script bottle, by the way. I find if I start with darker colours, I then struggle to make the whole thing lighter and usually end up with something incredibly dark, which is not normally what I'm wanting. Right, um, I don't want to add anything different to that. Just having a little bit of a think here, guys. Um, I've got some metallic champagne here. Now, I don't use this very often because I find it doesn't bray her out incredibly well. But I think a little splash of it here and there is not going to do any harm whatsoever. I think I find with the deco art paints that they're a lot more gel-like and they tend to not want to really bray it off very well. Now looking at this, I might just make this a background and not use any of the stencils or masks on there. And you will hear me say stencil or mask purely because it depends on how you're using it as to whether it is a stencil or a mask. Um, if you go over and watch any of the lives with Patricia and Mariah, and I highly recommend that you do, you will learn a whole heck of a lot about the terminology, the uses, the styles. Um, you'll learn so much about paint types, how to extend um, a paint's um, drying time so it doesn't dry too quick if you're in a dry climate, because obviously they're in Texas. Um, where everything is really, really dry. I'm here in Wales where everything's nearly always wet. So we're dealing with different drying times and P tends to use um, retarders quite a lot in her paints to slow down the drying time. There you go. So I've got a little bit of a colored background there. We seem to be staying with a green theme, which doesn't bother me at all. Right, let's see if I can just pull any of this off this plate here. Just pop that on there. I don't mind that having a bit of greeniness about it, if there is such a word as greeniness. And I think what I want to do is I want to put some browns into this or maybe some maroons. So what's this? Um, Tuscan red. I've got a feeling Tuscan red has got a brownish hint, hint to it. Or maybe it hasn't. Well, it's only going to go on as a thin layer anyway. Um, I just want to mix it up just slightly so we're not all, not everything is green. And I think I'm going to do the technique I did in the first poll, where I'm going to flip-flop one of the stencils down. And I'm going to use the smaller one this time. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm hoping that as I'm flipping flop this back and forth, it's lifting areas of paint up, which means it will leave behind it um, paler spaces on my background. So just coming in, remember a background is a background because it's the background. Right, let's just roll that off on there. And let's get a piece of paper down before I talk too much and it goes too dry on me. So, now I do have on my YouTube channel two playlists that pretty much deal with um, gel printing. There's um, Jelly Plate Play, which is a playlist where I do jelly printing. Well, I'm exploring my journey with jelly printing and I use any other products, including PM Artist Studio. I use their products. I also use my products um, as in design stencils I've done myself. Um, 
I tend to use that channel for that, but then I did speak to PM Artist Studio and said to Patricia and Mariah, do you mind me creating a dedicated playlist? Because I have lots of their stencils and I love their stencils and their masks. And I wanted to dedicate um, a piece of my YouTube channel to actually just demonstrating the uses and showing the versatility of them. So that's what this playlist is about. So whichever you're into, follow them both, follow, follow neither of them, watch both of them, watch neither of them. It's completely up to you. There you go. Now, isn't that fantastic? I love that. That's got, that's a really nice background to it. Now, I know I've got stuff still left on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this one. Remember the one I didn't use anything on the background? And I think I'm just going to use a little something here to pull this up. And I think I'm going to go with, um, what will I go with? Shall I go with like a yellow? Let's get. I'm going to pull in that transparent yellow again. I'm going to do this directly on the plate this time. And I don't want a hugely thick layer. I just want enough to moisten what's on the plate and enable me to lift it off the plate um, or as much of it off as I can. Now, periodically, you will see me using tissue paper or other bits of paper just to clean up the plate. Um, Let's just do this one thinking about it. Um, that's because there comes a time when you do need to just clean the plate off. And I always feel that some of my clean off sheets are usually better than some of my prints. So I tend to print onto tissue paper and then that tissue paper then becomes um, medium that I use for my collage work. Um, so, so nothing goes to waste here. Nothing goes to waste. OK, this... Um, the palette plate over here, I'm going to just clean it with a slightly damp cloth because otherwise it will contaminate everything else I put on the plate. Now, I, I'm trying my hardest to use um, damp cloths or damp... This is just a face cloth I bought from a local pound store. I bought, I bought a bundle of them. Um, and I'm trying to use those instead of always reaching for wet wipes, which is my natural instinct. I haven't given up using wet wipes, but I'm trying to cut down a little bit on wet wipes. So, so just try to do my little bit for the planet. If I can, if I can alleviate a little bit of pressure on the planet, just by my own, alter, my own, my own alterations in the way I work, then I'm going to give it a go. So, but there are times when I will use a wet wipe because they're handy. And if I do use a wet wipe, I will then recycle that wet wipe in some way to use in art pieces. So let's give this a lift and see how much I've pulled off. Okay, see that's that's giving it another layer of aged or grunge or whatever you wish to call it. It's, it's just giving it another layer of interest. So I've got a permanent magenta here. Now... On, on um, Windsor & Newton Gallery Acrylics, and this is the permanent I'm using here, um, there's an open square there, so it's just an outline. That means it's a transparent paint, so it means that it'll be something I can see through other than an opaque paint, which I wouldn't be able to see through. So, all right, let's get some of this down. Now, I think I'll probably do this one directly on here. I'm okay with this paint, I think, because I know it's quite a large plate and I'm not going to use so much of it that it goes everywhere. And I can always spray a little bit of it off if I need to. But I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brayer here, guys. I'm literally just letting the weight of the brayer almost roll itself out. So try and keep it shot would be a good idea, Griffiths. So there you go. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay down my... Um, stencils or masks whichever way you wish to name them prior to their use and then I'm going to bring in some tissue paper if I can get hold of the tissue paper All right bring in a piece of tissue paper right over the top and press it down now I use tissue paper because it's soft enough for me to work with my fingers down into all of the apertures of of the stencils that I'm putting in here. What these have done is these have masked off the areas so I can only pull the exposed paint. That means anything that's underneath these has been masked and left onto the plate. 
Hopefully that's as clear as mud. I'm not the greatest at explaining that because it confuses me half the time. At the end of the day, I'm all about, let's just get the result. So there you go. See that, that will just become another piece that I use for my um, collage work. So I've got those on here and I want to work reasonably quickly. And I'm gonna have my green one ready. Now I'm gonna pull these off. Now make sure that when you've pulled them off, you don't lay them over each other because I can guarantee they're gonna to stick to each other. Right, let's come in here. Now there's other things on this gel plate besides just the pieces you saw me um, expose. There'll be bits where the tissue is actually creased up in the corners and I like that. I want, I want that little layer of interest. So I seem to have got into the habit of using that. I did a, for a very long time use the palm of my hand because I've got big hands. There is a pr product out there or a piece of equipment called a Baron, which is B-A-R-E-N. It looks like a doorknob, to be honest with you. And you can use it to flatten down um, things. I tend to use, to use my hands or I use my larger um, brayer. So hopefully I'm in shot. I can't actually see through my camera very well because it's quite high up to be able to get this plate in. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Let's see what we've given this as the next layer of interest. Okay, we're doing well. See, these are the little bits I love capturing. So we've got the next layer of interest on there. So let's take a look at the next one. We've also got stuff on there, which I like. And as it's on there, it's not gonna pull off, but I think I'm gonna work on putting it onto here. And I think to lift that, I think I need something lighter on there. Ooh, something lighter. What would the lighter be? Now I could use um, metallics. I've found metallics don't overly pull very well, but I'm willing to give it a go. Okay, I've got um, Arteza Pearl Sage Green here. I'm not sure it's gonna pull much. Oh, it's not gonna pull anything if I can't pull the lid off this. I think I stuck the paint lids on too tight. Um, so I'm gonna put it on here. If it doesn't lift this, it will at least give um, the existing print um, a more frosted appearance. Now you'll note I'll put it straight onto the plate and that is because metallics dry really quickly for me. So what I'm gonna do is if I had to put it on the palette and then transferred it across, that gives me extra brayering time, which means it could be drying out. So I'm going to be fairly quick with this one or as quick as I can be. I don't expect a perfect pull. I don't expect everything to come off. I don't expect to be able to lift all of the detail underneath, but it will give me a layer of interest on here, which is what I'm hoping for. Right, I think that's as long as I can leave that before I press this down. Let's give that a bit of a rub on there. Now, when you watch Patricia and Mariah in their lives, and of course you can always watch the lives as a, as a playback, but you don't have the opportunity to then ask questions or interact with the community that they're building up. Um, Pri, who is the ex-art teacher um, and the mother, will actually often do, do this process and then leave the image sit for maybe several hours, sometimes even overnight before they pull the image. And when I'm saying pulling, what I mean is um, when I lift this off, that's the action of pulling, which means I'm pulling a print. So let's let that sit for a few seconds. OK, so. This gives you almost everything you need to know about this. Now, if you look in the description box, which is in that corner, there's a little gravy. I'm going to put several links to um, PM Artist Studio. I will try and link their Facebook. I will definitely link their website. I will link um, their YouTube channel. If I can remember, I will link this particular set of mandalas. Um, but look down there. All of their stuff is made from um, 74 pound UPO, which is 100% poly, poly, polypropylene um, synthetic material. So it's not it's not the acetate or the clear plastic. It's it's a white. These are white when they arrive, and um, they are washable. If you're somebody who washes your stencils good for you. I tend not to. I tend to just let them dry. The paint just makes them thicker over time. Sometimes I've actually found that 
with several uses. Sometimes the paint peels back off these and gives me interesting surprise effects. Um, you can wash them. I mean, there you go, when I scrape that bit, it comes as white. Um, you can wash them, in, put them into um, a washing up bowl of water if you wish and give them a gentle rub and they will clean up beautifully. Um, if you're going to keep your stencils clean, I would say make sure you put it immediately into the bowl of water and don't let it dry first. It'll just elongate the time you're taking to do it. Right, let's see how much of this came off. Okay, that pretty much annihilated that green in the background. So I may have to go in and re-establish some of that, but that's... That was one of the things that happens if you don't, I didn't remember to think to check whether it was a transparent or not. So, but I'm okay with that. That's got interest. It's got those little bits of purple in there. That's changed the character of that. So let's come in to look at this one. Okay, this one, where do I want to go with this? Now, this one has got some nice patches of white. So whatever I put on here is gonna really punch through this. Um, what do I want to do? I'm thinking I want to really make this pop. Now I know I've got flecks of the pearl down here already. So I'm going to put these on. Doesn't matter where I place them, I'm just placing them. Um, let's do one or two slightly off. Because that will give me the chance to maybe add something more. I'm trying to offset them just slightly. Okay, put them on there and that'll actually help me lift them off as well. Now I'm gonna come in and I've got some golden, oh, that's not the one I want. What have I done with it? There you go. I'm pulling in some golden transparent red ox iron oxide, one of my favorite colors. Um, I'm running a little low on this too. So, oh, I can't open it, there you go. So I'm gonna come in, that's probably why there was a, big glob of paint under the cap. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to put some of this down. I don't want so much that it becomes a problem, but I'm going to put some down. And then I'm going to brayer it on and over. So what I'm doing now is I'm pushing the paint through these and leaving that behind when I lift them. So therefore I'm stenciling the design onto my plate. Now, as I said, I don't usually get hung up whether I'm stenciling or masking. I just do it. So, which is probably why I sometimes get my terminology wrong. Now, I'm brayering reasonably firmly to make sure that the, the paint has gone down through the stencil. I think that's going to be a nice colour. Take that off. I'm going to lift these off and just lay them to one side. And then I'm going to come in immediately now I know this area here is white, so I'm going to put it on this side. And bang, pop that down, give it a good rub. Where to do that? Now I am only doing really basic stuff here. I'm not doing complex anything. I'm just having some fun creating interesting backgrounds. Well, I hope they're interesting anyway. Um, the more complex stuff I do over on my plate, um, jelly plate play list. And as I said, wow, that's coming on lovely. I'm loving that. Okay, I have to be careful not to lose stuff now because it would be really easy to put something over here and blank all this out as I did with the pearl one before. So I have to be a bit careful with that. Right, let's go back to this one. Right, I'm liking that in the background and I love that in the background. I now need to think, how am I gonna bring that to the fore? Um, ooh, my gut wants to reach for that one, but I think Yes, let's, let's reach for it. Let's just be brave. I'm going to mix a semi-transparent with, I think, an opaque here. So I'm going to put these down on, on my palette first. Because I'm not 100% certain how much I want to put on. And if I put it immediately onto the plate, I could end up getting myself in trouble here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the... Um, 
I'm wondering. Yes, I think I'm going to do what I just did before. I'm going to lay these down, or lie them down, however you want to word it. I always get lay and lie and you know what I mean. I'm going to put them down and then I'm going to peel them off and then put this on top of it. And I'm going to do that so that um, I will have some exposed areas, which means that I should be able to see the previous colours come through. Now I'm trying to do this not too heavily. I'm also not looking for a perfect print of anything. I'm just trying to make sure I've got something that hopefully will be pleasant on the eye. Looks kind of transparent. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that it's going to come off okay. It looks a little bit Irish to me. Right, if I've got that there and put it down there, I think that will be a good place for it. Okay. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Let's just run that over there a bit. And while that's just sat there thinking about itself, let's just clean my brayer off a little bit. So I've got some left on my plate here. I can use it to get a second print off for maybe one of the others, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, what did it give me? Okay, that's a bit a bit Kelly Green for me, but you know what? I'm okay with that because I can always work with that and push it back a bit. But I love the layers I'm getting from this. So I do think this wasn't a huge success. This, this one needs a little bit of a rescue. And I think as it was originally green, I think it's going to be green again. So I'm going to come in with what's on this plate. And I think I'm going to do that flip-flop thing that I've seen Patricia do that I actually like doing myself. And it's going to be a transparent so that it means that it's going to be really quite a thin coat of something. Let's pick that up. So it's just... Let's get that down quickly before it dries because it's an ultra thin coat. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the group that PM Artist Studio have on Facebook. Um, it's Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. Um, the reason I like it is because uh, PM are very much about self-promotion of the people in the group, not necessarily in themselves. They're like, they want you to share. They want you to ask questions. They, they want you to share your websites and your findings. They do monthly, um, they're called the hops. So whether you're a YouTuber or a non-YouTuber, they have these projects that they do each month um, to share skills and techniques with each other. Um, they do giveaways periodically. They're, this just is wonderful. It's a really nice, helpful, supported community. And and I love it. I mean, obviously, you have to respect. I mean, you, you can't go on the rip some of the pieces, but I hope you wouldn't do that anyway. OK, well, that's there. Uh, let me just clean off this green off my palette over here while I'm chatting. Um, but yes, I've, I've known... PM Artist Studio now less than a year and I'm so pleased that I found them. Uh, they're a lot of fun. There's a lot of really good stuff happens there and and I'm I mean I'm not rewarded in any any financial way whatsoever guys for doing these videos. I'm doing them because I truly believe that they are a, a family owned unique little business and I really want to see them grow because I think um, People who can offer something different to the world nowadays are what excites me. And I think there are so many mass produced things out there to find a company like PM Artist Studio who actually just draw it, they design it, they cut it, they package it. It's a family unit that are doing it. Um, a lot of it is based on P's artwork. Some of it, Brad will take an idea and run with it. 
M will come up with stuff and fine tune stuff for both P and Brad. Um, and all of them have their own artistic input and it's absolutely wonderful. I love it. Right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, this one is struggling, isn't it? This isn't going in the direction I want, but you know what? It'll be a background. So I've got some muck on here. Let's see if I can just pop it onto here. I don't think anything is gonna pull off this. I'd be really surprised. If it does, this will be what's called a ghost print, as in it's just picking up what was left on the plate. So we'll have a little look, shall we? Let's see if anything lifts off. Mm, a little bit, not a lot. So I've got little hints of green, which actually I'm all about layers. I'm all about visual texture. So that's okay with me. So I'm just going to come in again with this yellow oxide. See, when you look at the back of this, I don't know how close I can get. It'll say transparent, matte, thin, low, thin. It says it's actually a gloss and it says it's opaque. But if I roll it thin enough, it's not an opaque. So I just want a really thin coat. My aim is to obliterate the white on this on this print. So and not to obliterate anything else. So I'm going to be quite careful about how much I leave on the plate and how much I lift off the plate. Take some of that off on there. And that looks like a hair. And it can't be one of my hairs because I don't have hair. I'm a guy with no hair. I'm thinking that's still too much on there. Let me just see if I can bray it off onto some stuff over here. I really do not want to lose what we've built up already, so I want to make sure that I've really got this down to a fine, fine layer. I mean, I can see by the black dot under my, under my mat how transparent I'm going to make this once I've finished. Right, that's beginning to dry. I need to get this on there now or I'm never going to get anything off it. Okay, we've committed, guys. We've committed. I have no idea what we've committed to, but we've committed. So I should tidy that up a bit over there. So, um, okay, another thing. You'll notice that my gel plates are on acrylic sheets. Um, I just found these on the internet and the little black bits are actually just little sticky back rubbered feet that you would use for furniture or to stop things moving around. The joy of this is that by having them on a plate like this, you can turn over and look, we can see roughly what's coming through through reflections and killing you. Um, and also say I had an image down, let's just use this for instance, and this one. If I gel printed that, I could then turn it over and look as to where I wanted to place it. And you'll see, um, Patricia does that a lot and a lot of gel platers do that as well and it's something I do and it really really does help. It's just, it's a little bit of further braying. Now we're going to cross our fingers at this point because I really do hope I haven't messed that one up. But you know if I have, I have, but I, I'm hoping I haven't. Okay, we've got character there. I've lost some of the green but it's still in there. I don't mind this. I think that's that's not bad. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's showing up on camera, but I can definitely see into this. I can easily re-establish the burgundy color I had in there. And we've still got white patches on here, so maybe a bit of green needs to come in as well. In hindsight, I think I should have rolled off even more of that than I did. Right, I think it's time to address this puppy. And I think we need to come in and give this a real good punch of something. And I'm thinking violet. Um, let's have a little look at what I've got. Permanent violet dark. That's probably too dark. Um, quinacridone, quina I guess I never say these. Quinacridone violet. Um, it's a semi-transparent. That's fine with me. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to um, put the stencils down again and I'm going to roll that colour over the top and then we're going to take it from there. And then I might just do a couple of more techniques on the other ones. 
Oh, I should have bought more of this. Um, I was in the art store this morning buying paint and I forgot about, about this one. So hopefully I don't run out. I like this one. So I've got a dark violet, but I just always seem to be drawn to that one. Right, let's just get this down. Now what this is going to do is it is actually going to not only give me where I lift the stencils off, but all of these areas are going to be quite dark as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift them off and then try and combine it with a little bit of that flip-flop technique you've seen me do. I've got to be careful though because this is drying really, really, really quickly. So if I pull that off and just try and lift a few pieces out of here. Okay, you need to come off now because I'm never going to get this off otherwise. Okay, let's get this down quickly. So I'm flinging things around because some of these paints, the drying time is like now. <laughs> there is no breathing time. It's now. That's, it's dry. Um, I don't use retarders because it's very rare I have, I have a day where I, I have to move quickly. Um, other than with metallics, my metallics do dry very, very quickly. So let's just let that sit for a second and see what I've achieved or hopefully not destroyed. Let's give this plate a little bit of a clean up because it needs it. Um, so let's keep our fingers crossed and see what happened to this one. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm loving that more now. I like what that's given me and I like what it's left there because I can use that somewhere else. See, that's that saved that. I mean, we know that originally it was like that limey green color and we had orange on it or yellow on it, but it's, it's coming back. I'm loving that. Right, I'm looking at this thinking that would look good on there. I need, however, to find something to lift that with that's not going to contaminate that. Um, I'm wondering, should we do copper? I think copper might work. Is this a, I can't remember if this is transparent or not. Semi-transparent. I think if I put copper, copper would really enhance that and give that a really good backing to it. Yeah, that's pretty much dry. Right, let's see if I can get some copper on here. Come on, Mr. Copper. Now, again, I don't want a huge amount, although I've got a feeling I've already put too much on there, but I've got stuff to one side to roll her off on. So, and I want to gently roll her over the top of this. I do not want to press down hard because I don't want to lift that burgundy paint off. I think I'm just going to come in with a bit of tissue and just take some of that away just to lift the top layer of that off. So I have too much paint on as I predicted, which is exactly why I try not to do what I was doing. I think I'm going to come in and do what I did before, which is lift a few pieces off on this one because I like the way that looked. Added another layer of interest. I'm wondering whether that should be fine. Be brave, Gif Griffiths, be brave. Get the sucker down before it dries out completely on me. Did I headbutt you again? I did. So I've got the iPad and it's sort of level with the top of my head. Um, and I always forget because it's just marginally out of my eye line. So I tend to headbutt it often and I do apologize for that. But I try to edit it out whenever I see it, if I've done it. So you never know, you may even not even see that in the final video and go, what is he talking about? Thing didn't shake. It's because I didn't actually nod a uh, head but it in the end. So I've got that on there. Let's give that a few seconds to have a think about itself. Now, I'm liking this one. I think this one probably needs just one more thing on it. And I think it needs a contrast. And I've got a feeling I want to do these in a different layout over the top and I think I want them to be black and I think that's probably where I want to take that print. This one I've been avoiding because I'm really not sure what I want to do to knock that back. 
Now I could put a blue on it, which would make this all a lot bluer. I could put um, a yellow or an orange onto this, which would make it more, no, a yellow would make it more acid. Um, an orange would make this more terracotta or brownish. I need to think about this a little bit more. It's, it's kind of bothering me that I can't get my head around that one. So let's just pull this off. Yes, I think that was the right choice. I may have lost a little bit of the background stuff, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm liking it. I think this could also do with a bit of the black treatment as well. So let's put that to one side. So I've got two nice pieces on the floor and I've got this. Now I've got stuff around the edge of this, this plate. I don't mind that, it's not gonna do me any harm at the moment, but I think we really do have to address this. So what's, what's the opposite to green? Because it will cancel it out. So the opposite to green is this sort of burgundy, sort of maroon, magenta color. So the way you think of it is, if you go in this direction, the more of this color I add, the less intense that color would be and it would actually come to the middle and actually cancel itself out almost. So I think we're gonna to have to do something magenta-ish or maybe at least pink. Wonder whether I've got a transparent in something along those lines. I thought I did. This is transparent. Yes, transparent per permanent magenta. Right. I think we also need to add something to this. So it's not just a complete whitewash of that. Maybe I should just do this. Let's just do this because I've, I'm trying to think color combinations in my head. And I think that's reasonably dangerous because I'm not going to be able to see it and, until I've done it. So I'm putting a really, really thin coat of this down here. And I mean a real thin coat because I don't I don't want I don't want the whole thing just turning magenta. I want I want to play around a little bit with the colour balance and the intensities of this. So let's get that down there. I'm hoping what this will do is it'll just knock the green back ever so slightly. So it's not such a Almost like a Kelly green, which is not the green I was looking for in the first place, I can assure you. Right. Okay, it did have the desired effect. It knocked the acidness out of that. Now I need to consider what to put over that. So let's put this to one side and go to one of the previous ones, which I think it's time to actually do the business and get them finished. So this one for me, I really feel, am I in shot? Yes, I, I'm in shot. I think I really feel that if we put black onto this one now, that one is potentially finished. Um, don't mind the gunk on the edge, that's fine with me. It may lift, it may not lift. Right, um, I do have um, Deco Art American Satin Black Tie. However, I also have um, Mars Black in Winter and Newton, and this is a thicker, heavier body, and I think I want to use that, that for this. Otherwise, the liquid one, I'm not 100% certain would give me what I'm looking for. I'm going to be a little bit careful because it's a new tube and I could get over squeezy. So let's just get a layer of this down. I'm hoping what this black will do to is sink into any of these edge pieces and actually give me the ability to lift some of the gunk off the edges as well. Right, let's put you relatively in the middle. You off to one side and you down to there. For no other reason than I, I know that on this print I've got it in that corner which would be up there. So I wanted to offset it slightly get myself a piece of tissue paper. 
Now I'm using tissue paper this time so I can actually go right down into these um, apertures and lift as much as I can. I may actually have to do the tissue paper twice um, depending on what's underneath there. Now this is a bit of tissue paper that previously I did do this technique with white um, and it could be that the white paint may transfer part of the image because that there isn't where I put the stencil or the mask. That's um, the old painted version. So you never know, I might end up with an effect that I wasn't expecting. So I'm just trying to remember exactly where I put these stencils on here just so that I'm picking up as much as I can. So let's give this a lift and have a look. Okay, that's pretty, I like the way it's left all of that around the outside. Let's just take that off there. That off there. That's looking very, very promising, right. I need to make sure that I don't put the same size where the same size was before with the stencils and mass. So I'm going to give this a good, good press down and we'll turn this over and see whether I've got an idea of what this is going to look like. Let's have a quick, a little quick look. Ooh, I think that's going to be interesting. If that comes out looking like that, I think I'll be very happy and I'll consider it finished. So let's turn that over. I'm going to let that sit for a few seconds or a few minutes, should I say, purely because I want, I want to give the paint that I've just put on a chance to grab any of the paint underneath it. Now, I find that the more paint you have on your print to start with, the more time you need to leave it because the layer of print, a layer of paint can sometimes just reject the paint underneath it. So I like it to soak through. So I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you what this is. So this is Celtic Knot Mandalas, um, mask and tidbit set of three. Um, these are the three and that's the tidbit. And that, that is actually the tidbit. And I use that so often. I mean, I'm working on, let's see if I can reach it. I'm working on an artist trading card at the moment. Not sure how much you're going to see of that. This is nowhere near finished. I'm trying to get a real antique look to this. I've got cracked paint. I've got some shading to do it. But this is this was actually this, and I've used it on the trading card. So once it's finished, it's finished. It'll just be a unique little bit of art, and I love doing them. So so that's over there. So um, social media links just. Search PM Artist Studio for Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and obviously YouTube. I'll put as many links as I possibly can in that corner where there's going to be a little gravy or a read more. Click on that and it'll come down. Okay, that's staying as it is. I like that. I'm happy with that. I've got some nice stuff down there as well. So this needs something to pick this up with. Um, definitely need something transparent. I don't think I need, don't think I need a metallic. I would like something to make that really, really, really rich. And I'm thinking transparent iron oxide, which means this is gonna come off considerably more rich and orange than it is already so let's cross our fingers let's cross our fingers i've got enough of it for a start so let's just get this spread on here now this the black does dry quite quickly because it's a highly pigmented um paint i would say um the darker the color usually the higher the pigment the faster it dries just my findings okay guys test all the different paints you've got and see which ones you like i don't favor one brand over another i tend to just like the paint for the paint itself i use everything from really inexpensive paints to some expensive paints i mean golden golden paint here in the uk is not is not the cheapest paint i can absolutely assure you i mean i bought i bought this one this morning 
Um, it's, let's see, one fluid ounce, and it was £12 in money, but thank goodness I had a sale. It was reduced to £6. So when you reckon this one here, if it wasn't reduced, would probably cost about $14 American just for this little one here. So I tend to treasure my golden paints when I can get hold of them. And I'm in Chicago in, a, in about a week and a half's time. And if I find them on sale in Chicago, I'm probably going to buy some and hope I can get it back in my luggage without it exploding and destroying my clothing. But it's a risk I might be willing to take. Right. Let's see what happened to this little one, shall we? Let's see if we've helped it or hindered it. Okay, that's got a richness about that. I'm liking that. Okay, and I like the fact that it's just, everything's just slightly ghosted into it. So, we're now on to this one. Now, I am not loving this one. Because this is just not interesting at the moment to me. I think I'm going to grasp... Let's see, Mariah's always saying, use gold, use gold, use gold. Um, which I know Patricia's like, really? Gold again? And I think... I think I'm going to go for gold, literally go for gold. So this is Galleria Acrylic Gold. Um, it says it's a transparent, and I know it is a transparent. Um, I think maybe that might just lift it, but I'm not sure that it's going to 100% rescue it. Um, so bear with me. We may end up with a print that actually isn't completely finished, but you know what? I'm more... I don't want, I don't want this to go on and on and on, on. You may see this one again. If this doesn't work this time, if I don't manage to get this to be really what I'm looking for, you may see this print in the future, one of my jelly play, play lists. Let's come in and do a few of these on here and see if I can just lift stuff out of this. I'll try and get some different sizes in. I don't mind that, have I just hit you with my head again? I think I did. I don't mind that we haven't got complete coherent designs. I'm looking for just almost a trellis work to look through on the pieces of art underneath. I'm looking for it to be slightly messy, um, which is probably not something I should be saying, but I'm looking for it to be slightly messy for once. Let's just give this a bit of a roller down. that sit for a second or two. Well, I've still got some gold on here. I'm wondering whether I can just run a little bit of gold onto here just to give it a little something. There you go. It's not really that much but I can just see a hint of it on there. So, fingers crossed on this one. So I think we're coming to the end. I'm going to wrap this up in a second or two, to be honest with you. I just want to make sure that we played enough. Um, I've had fun. I always have fun doing gel printing. So let's see what this, this puppy looks like now, shall we? As I said, I'm unsure. I could have made a complete mess or I could have created a monster. Actually, that's better than it was. Do I think it's finished? No, but it's interesting. I wonder. So I'm having a thoughtful moment here, guys. I said about this one needing a bit more magenta into it. And I'm wondering whether I'm going to do magenta, the technique that gave me the black pieces. I might do that one more time. I know, bear with me, we're going to overrun. And then anything that's left on that plate can then sit onto there because that's got magenta hues in it as well. So, right, bear with me, guys. I'm sorry, we're, we're going over. I'll try and edit and fast forward and clip out things that maybe we don't need to be watching. I'll try and get this as close to an hour as possible. So, right, let's bray this out a bit. actually looks quite thin to what I was thinking I wanted. 
maybe I should leave it like this. I'm also going to take these gold side down because if anything comes off these, it'll be actually be a bonus, won't it? So let's put that down. Where's that tissue paper? I need a new piece of tissue paper. The tissue paper's covered in every colour under the rainbow at the moment. So again, trying to get down into this. Um, if you're going to ask me what tissue paper I'm using, I very often use everything from gift wrap to daddy wrap to what whatever I can get my hands on. Sometimes I even use free packaging tissue from where I'm, I put orders in. However, this one is actually um, carnival tissue paper. It's... Um, it's a water resistant tissue. I think that's how they word it. You can get it online. I, I usually get it here in the UK because they're based in the UK. You can buy it on Amazon, but I found it's cheaper to go directly to the manufacturer, um, which if you put in carnival tissue paper, um, you'll find it that way. Right. Well, that cleaned that considerably well. Let's see if I can. Oh, look, it did leave some gold on it. That might be interesting. Okay, so this, if I do it that way on, and see what we can get off from here. And while that's sitting thinking about itself, let's pull in the other print just in case I've got a chance to get a second pull off it. I'm going to be quite quick about this, so I'll show you the print after I've after I've got this one down. I just want to make sure that if there's any chance of pulling a ghost print, I've got it here. Right, so that's what that did to that. I like the fact that it's made it really grungy. I wouldn't add anything else to this except maybe a feature something. Like if I was going to use this as a background for a piece of art, then it would be great as a background. Um, I like it. I think it could use something, but I don't know what that is. But I'm okay with that. So that's one print done. This is the other print that we've already decided is done. So let's see what's under this sucker and see if I pulled up anything from here. Oh, I did. It gave us another layer of something. Again, it's a print I don't think is completely done, but there are some fabulous layers within these. I mean, you can see all the way back through all of these layers. So hopefully you've enjoyed that, guys. Um, the, the set we'll be using looks like this. And where's that long, thin one gone? There you go, that's that's how it looks. Um, that's a bit of information for you. It's the Celtic Knot Mandalas Masks. That's the Mask and Titbit set of three. That's the information for it. I'll put as much as I can in the description box, which is down there, which is under the Grey V or in the Read More. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, guys. As I said, I'm just playing. I just want to bring um, a unique little company and a unique set of masks and stencils and other products to your attention because I truly would love this company to grow. Um, I love... I love the way they're supportive and energetic and experimental. So do me a favor, pop across, watch some of those lives or watch them on playback. You make your own decisions, but just know that I think they're fabulous. And from me, I think it's goodbye. I will see you again next time. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.